Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Tonight News. I'm Joe Boric, and it wasn't all too good of a day in the end for our Reading Royals, as even though they controlled the tempo for most of the first two periods of the game, they were still trailing and then seemed to have that affect them going forward in terms of showing the frustration in that third period at different times and different moments. But everybody, please continue to subscribe down below or up above on these videos, which at the end, to help us get to 200 by the end of February, let's get into breaking down this odd game. Well, after the first, the shots were actually 14-9 to 9 <clears throat> in favor of our Reading Royals, excuse me, where there was a good back-and-forth period where uh, Newfoundland was able to score on New Gold's nice rebound goal that they had on the rush. Uh, but the Royals, honestly, I thought outchanced them and uh, had better tempo throughout that first period. It's just Newfoundland was able to come away with the 1-0 lead. <clears throat> and then in the second, uh, the Royals got the power play going, which was 1-5 for five last night, so that's something um, you're going to want to be able to see. Um, and they got the power play going on Gooch's rebound goal after Bykoff had a very nice one-timer to be able to allow that rebound. But then <clears throat> the Royals were up 12-2 to 2 in shots. And then a very frustrating thing happens when you're really controlling the play. And long and behold, New Gold comes down, has a slot shot, and he's able to score. New Gold's obviously a star of this game for Newfoundland, setting the tempo for them, even though they weren't playing a great overall game at this moment. And then all of a sudden, New Gold's still able to pot two goals, even though the Royals play better in the first tempo-wise and play better in the second tempo-wise. But New Gold's able to come down and give them the lead back. Um, <clears throat> and, and then Peter, or Pete Ranero, excuse me, was able to score crashing the net on a rebound, which gave them the 3-1 to one lead. And then they had a great one-timer to give them the 4-1 to one lead late in the second of a second period that if you look at the control of play and everything, you would say the Royals actually did better than the Growers, but then they're down 4-1, so imagine how frustrating that is. After two periods, you're out-chancing, you're out-shooting the team, you have the better control of tempo, where I think a fault in this game, and that's the thing I sent to Eric to ask the question <clears throat> um, post-game for me, uh, since I wasn't on site today, but like, it maybe play, we played to the strengths of the Growers by letting the chippiness kind of become a bigger part of the game, because they were up in a game that I just said, that the Reading Royals controlled the chances, controlled the tempo overall, but then were still down 4-1 to one after the, the first two periods, just due to um, New Gold especially, and then Pete Nero getting a very good uh, crashing chance there, and then a nice one-timer goal um, at the end of the second period. So it's incredibly frustrating uh, for the Reading Royals when you look at it from that perspective, but at the same time, they still should have came out. I thought the third period was by far the worst period where, yes, they did still outshoot them um, when you look at it in the third. But in the end, it, they they really didn't have the better chances, in my opinion, in the third, even though they had the shot advantage by two, nine to seven. That's the period that I think they let the frustration show, which, again, is human nature when you're killing the team tempo-wise, shot-wise, chance-wise, and you're down 4-1 to one after the first two. But that hasn't been what's been a part of the Royals much this year. They lost two straight coming into this game. Kind of let the frustration show in the third. I'm really anticipating and excited to see what they're going to be able to do um, coming back out this week. As obviously our Reading Royals look to rebound as this week. They have the Wheeling Nailers on Tuesday and Wednesday in Wheeling after losing to them this weekend. So they got to quickly... Uh, turn their heads, get their heads on straight, keep moving forward as they played a good overall game in the first two periods, especially controlled the changes, controlled the tempo of play. Hockey was all right in this game, but they just were down and then let the frustration show in the third. Um, it wasn't the the worst overall game, in my opinion, by any stretch of the imagination. I thought they actually played a half-decent game and, again, played probably through the first two at B level and then just went down to C level or like lower in the third just because the frustration started to show and that's never going to get you anywhere uh, when you start having the frustration show uh, and if you're the Reading Royals. That's just obviously uh, never going to get you anywhere far once you start letting that frustration show where they did show some fight in the end obviously with the goaltender pool with Hayden Hawkey pulled. Tomas Ebbing was able to 
score uh, late there on a nice uh, shot across. And then they showed the frustration at the end by low attack uh, there, which is a cool thing in the in the sense of uh, the old school fighting hockey mentality. But you don't want to let the frustration show like that. And the Royals outplayed them through most of the game. Unfortunately, they kind of let the frustration show in the end, got the loss. But in the end, this is a game, how I said about the last two, until we really start faltering, faltering, and don't let it, like, this team doesn't show any perseverance in any fighting game, which I don't anticipate seeing. I'm not going to be too worried because when we look at these recent games, minus the trial Revere 10-4 loss, where there's a, quite a few things that went wrong in that game, in my opinion, against Wheeling, that was a really close game. It just happened to go to the degree of Wheeling uh, yesterday in that game. And then, and that was really because the Royals couldn't show up on the power play. Where today, the Royals showed up big time on 5-on-5, five five, and then also they did they lost the 5-on-5 five five battle defensively in that game against Royal. But today, they showed up good on 5-on-5. Five five. It's just Newfoundland had a couple plays they were able to get it done, especially New Gold, and that seemed to really, in the end, <clears throat> kind of lead to some frustration in the third period, and that's never going to, again, help you get anywhere when you're starting to show the frustration a little bit if you're the Reading Royals. So, the next games are going to be against the Wheeling Nailers in Wheeling Tuesday and Wednesday as our Royals look to bounce back. Uh, I would have to say the stars of this game obviously go to Evan Newgold, Evan Cormier uh, also to get, uh, has to be a star of this game. He was really good for Newfoundland. And then Jeremy McKenna, who had the one-timer and then also had a nice delay empty netter where I believe it was Millen trying to defend him on that play. This has been a reaction to a really odd ball, a 5-3 loss for the Reading Royals against the Newfoundland Growlers, where there was an odd loss in a sense of the Royals got chipped out a little bit by the refs, but also didn't step up enough on the power play against Wheeling yesterday. But then this game was really odd because the tempo, like I said, was controlled by the Royals for most of the first two periods, then happened to still be down 4-1. to one. Uh, Evans able to get a goal late in the third, but otherwise kind of let that frustration show a little bit more in the third uh, after being down when, again, it seemed like they controlled the tempo as a whole. Everybody have a great, safe, pleasant day. Stay safe out there, and let's go Royals. Let's bounce back this week. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the Easy Jews widget to help us grow to 200 by the end of February. Peace out, everybody.